we're here in Tavistock Square in front of the memorial to conscientious objectors. That's the stone that you see behind me, to people who have refused to fight and often faced horrific consequences for doing so. And one of the things that we do today is commemorate them and the struggles that they have been through. Another thing that we do today is we commemorate all those who have died in war. It includes those in the military on all sides, many of whom, of course, will have been conscripts, many of whom will have not wanted to fight, many of whom will have been terrified of what they were being thrust into. It also commemorates civilians, journalists, aid workers, people caught up in the crossfire, people caught up in friendly fire, people caught up in the militarization and arms industry in all sorts of different ways. The best thing that we can do for all of these people is to end war. We're here in 2024 when you would hope that the women who founded the white poppy movement back in 1933 would have imagined that by this stage we would have found different ways of dealing with disagreement and conflict that didn't involve violence and warfare. But sadly, we are here watching warfare around the world escalating. And we are here hot on the heels of the re-election of Donald Trump. Um, we are here while war continues to rage. We've, we will be talking a lot today about what is happening in Palestine, but there is also hugely important things going on in Lebanon, in Sudan, in Ukraine, in Russia, and all kinds of other places around the world. And we're here to commemorate all of the people who are suffering as a result of that and to call for it to stop. I spoke at this ceremony myself a few years ago, and it was a real honor to be invited back to host it. But one thing that I have noticed is that last time I spoke, I talked about it on social media and there wasn't very much reaction apart from that sounds nice or we might come. Um, and this year, there's been quite a remarkable backlash. And it frightens me in a way to think that we are heading further and further towards a world in which calling for peace incites a backlash incites rage in people. And the first thing that I saw a lot this morning, in fact, it was kind of the last message I saw before I switched my phone off, was people saying, why have you got to have it at the same time as the other ceremony? Can't we just have one hour? And the answer to that is firstly that the whole point of an alternative, <laughs> well, that's the point of an alternative. But secondly, I hear you. Can we not have one hour? Well, you can have your hour. Can we have an hour? Can we have an hour when bombs don't fall? Yes. Can we have an hour where children don't lie unattended on hospital floors, struggling for pain relief, struggling for food, struggling for basic medicine? Can we have an hour when the manufacturers don't churn out yet more explosives, cluster bombs, yeah, really. weapons which will take generations to be cleared from our environment and whose impact on the environment will be felt for generations to come. Can we have, please, just an hour? And the other thing that I've heard is this rising voice, this increasing amount of noise. Well, look, Donald Trump has won. This is happening. This is going on. You're going to have to accept it. This is how the world is now. And I hear that and it hurts but I will still always be on this side and I will still always be proud to be on this side, whether we are winning or we are losing. If the net conclusion of this is that war takes over and we are unable to stop it, well, so be it. I will still be proud to say that at every opportunity, I raised my voice against that and did what I could.